Our next speaker is Tom Welch. Uh, for those of you who have the opportunity to travel outside Iowa and participate in these kinds of discussions, you will quickly learn we are blessed to have Tom Welch working in the Iowa DOT here. Thank you, Tom. Uh, it reinforces what some of this national study has been showing on causation of the crashes. Um, rarely is the roadway a contributing factor or even a major factor on fatal crashes. The driver behavior is a major factor in almost two-thirds of all fatal crashes. It is a contributing factor over 90% of the fatal crashes. Uh, the roadway is a major factor in less than 5%, a contributing factor you know, in a very, very small percentage. So the challenge to us engineers is what can we do? And we could build straight, flat roadways in Iowa with perfect sight distances and there still be a high number of the fatalities that are occurring in Iowa continuing to occur. Uh, so what we try to do in our profession is to provide a forgiving environment. It is inevitable that there's going to be bad judgment, there's going to be driver error, and what we're going to try to do in our profession, the best that we can do in our profession is to provide that forgiving environment so that if you do make that mistake that you hopefully can recover uh, from that. So I'm just going to show you some of the more recent uh, innovative engineering strategies. I could talk here for an hour about all the different engineering strategies we could do and have done, but things that are beginning more popular across the country that other states have taken the lead on or discovered and we're implementing here in, uh, in the other states. Uh, as you're beginning to see in Iowa, and if you've been to Missouri, you've seen hundred miles, hundreds of miles of cable median. More distracted drivers, more people going out in those winter weather conditions and bad conditions, assisting that they can drive and going off of the medians and going across the medians and causing head-on crashes and fatalities. Distracted drivings, we're going to see much more of that. We're just getting the touch of the iceberg. That generation of drivers who insisted and are addicted to text messaging is just entering our driving environment. And we're going to see dramatic increase, I think, in cross-center line head-on crashes. States such as Michigan and Missouri are saying we're not waiting. Michigan's DOT's chief engineers told all the district engineers, you shall install center line rumble strips on every two-lane highway in the state of Michigan, regardless of the pavement condition. I don't care what it does to that center line joint within the next two years. Uh, Missouri has put in thousands of miles of this. Uh, we've put in several miles in Iowa. We will be putting in more miles, more driven by, by uh, uh, crash history at this point. But I think you'll see this being a very common application, again, to try to mitigate that distracted driving issue that is out there. We know that not only younger drivers, but drivers my age and older have a very high difficulty of crossing and making left-hand turns at high-speed multi-lane roadways, the expressway systems. Iowa is one of 20 states that's built hundreds and hundreds of miles of roadways that look like interstates except without the interchanges. North Carolina, Maryland's taken the lead on this, is building what was called J-turns that prohibit you from going straight across or making a left turn. It makes you make a right turn, go down and make a U-turn through the median and come back and cross into the side road or continue off to your left. Well over 90% effective in reducing all crashes. Very, very controversial. You think roundabouts are controversial. Try to go out in the public in Iowa and explain we're going to build a J-turn. The shoulder, paved shoulders, you know, have been out there for a long time. We started putting rumble strips out on the interstates, saw how they're very effective, other states did. Now the other states are applying that uh, on all the two-lane roadways, more of the two-lane roadways, including Iowa, is finally putting paved shoulders. I think we're the last state in the country to put in paved shoulders. But again, you see in the center there, what Missouri did is, Mississippi actually took the one step further. Mississippi, they get a lot of rain. When you get rain, the rain covers the pavement marking. Now, pavement marking is consisted of not only paint, but glass beads. And it is with your headlights that reflect off that glass bead that makes that uh, pavement marking really show up at night. You put water over that little bit of rain, you don't get that reflectivity, you end up driving in a black hole. When you've paved the shoulders, you've paved the roadway all black, uh, you, you essentially are driving in a black hole oftentimes. So Mississippi came up with the idea, let's move the center line, edge line, to the rumble strip, paints the vertical force, the water, can't uh, hide that and you get very positive guidance at night uh, in that area. And what's key is all these things we're talking about here are very relatively low cost. You start doing system-wide. Um, Non-engineering, uh, we've had great success in enforcing seat belts, getting great uh, high percentage of seat belt use in the daytime, tremendously drops off at nighttime. So what states have been doing, including Iowa Department of Public Safety, has been increasing our nighttime seat belt enforcement. We need to try to convey to the drivers 
that there is more risk to this behavior than what they've been seeing in the past, and it's getting very challenging with the reduction enforcement offices that are out there. The, you know, that's the primary challenge we have as professions is the fortu unfortunate thing is that drivers perceive there's greater reward in all this behavior than there is greater risk. And if we don't change that thought process, it's going to be very difficult uh, to do so. The other thing we did in a non-injury perspective is when we go out and look at safety challenges, we have not in the past done a very good job of trying to address driver behavior and getting input from the drivers. What the Federal Highway Administration has been encouraging states to do is, is to make your studies multidisciplinary, have multidisciplinary people out on your road safety reviews, not just engineers. Uh, another innovative uh, strategy, again, very low cost solution that the Federal Highway Administration is promoting is when we're resurfacing the roadway, building the roadway, instead of having a vertical drop, even though you're going to have gravel up there and you know that gravel is going to wear off and have an edge drop, put a small slope on the edge of that roadway that's recoverable, that is forgivable. And that's what we're seeing with all these things, is trying to provide a forgiving environment. Our chief engineer is leaning towards uh, making this a standard in Iowa. I believe that's the direction he's given our, our, our offices. And uh, we'll be probably the first in the country to do this system-wide on the edge of our shoulders. And other states have been doing this. So those are just some of the you know, new things that are out there, uh, trying to address it. And uh, again, I, I challenge you to, we've really got to look at how do, how do we convey through education and experiences to these drivers of their behavior is far greater, riskier than what they feel it is, and it's more riskier than the war that they perceive they're going to get themselves into. So thank you.